Shalom, friends. This is the Kiva Gersh with Israel in 5, and I want to invite you to bring Israel into your home throughout the year with the amazing and stunning Meir Panim calendar. This calendar will keep you connected to Israel throughout the year with its listed Jewish holidays and Israeli national holidays, and especially through its 16 beautiful, breathtaking professional photographs of various historical and biblical sites around the land of Israel, each one accompanied by amazing facts about each one. Some of these photographs, in fact, have been taken by an IDF soldier, giving you that very, very unique vantage point that only an IDF soldier can give. This makes a perfect gift for family members and friends who love Israel, who love the Bible, who love history. And the best part of it all, it's free. By making a donation to Mayor Panim, you will get this calendar for free. It's shipped worldwide. You can give it to family members or friends. Keep it for yourself as a way to keep connected to Israel all throughout the year. Just go to israel5.org forward slash calendar or click on the link below to make a donation to Mayor Panim and keep Mayor Panim doing its amazing, incredible work that it always does and needs to continue to do specifically for IDF soldiers and for evacuated families deeply affected by this war. Again, go to israel5.org forward slash calendar or click on the link below to make a donation to Mayor Panim, get this amazing and stunning calendar and stay connected to Israel all throughout the year. When we look at the history of the land of Israel, we see a long string of different empires who took control over this land, hoping to replace the previous empires with their own forever. Let's take a look at that. Shalom, my friends. This is the Kiva Gersh with Israel in 5, where we give you everything in Israel in five minutes. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or want to keep the conversation going, please do so below in the comments. We know that the Jewish people came into the land of Israel over 3,000 years ago after hundreds of years of slavery in Egypt, after 40 years of wandering and traveling around the desert. They were brought to the, the banks of the Jordan River opposite Jericho, and they came into this land. And they lived here for hundreds and hundreds of years before they were attacked by external forces. Let's take a look at the different empires that attacked this land, that took control over this land, that the Jews lived under their rule in this land. Uh, the first big empire to really uh, attack the, the Israelites living in this land at that time were the, were the Assyrians. They, they uh, first um, attacked and exiled 10 tribes in the north. This is going back to around the 8th century BCE. So we're talking about about 2,800 years ago. And they literally just, you know, like that um, caused most of the nation of Israel, most of the Israelites to disappear. They were brought to other lands in, in, in regions in the Assyrian Empire. And eventually they assimilated until they were no longer recognizable as Israelites. There's a big question in Jewish thought Will these lost tribes, as they're known as, ever reappear again? Will they appear uh, at the end of days? Will they not ever appear again? It's, it's, it's what we call a machloket. It's a, it's a debate, a disagreement in Jewish thought. After the Assyrians, it was the Babylonians. And under the Babylonians, that's when the first temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. And the Babylonians exiled the remnant of the Jews, uh, specifically from the area of Judea in the south around Jerusalem, uh, and further south, they exiled all of them to uh, Babylonia and, and, and kept them there uh, in the first real exile of the Jewish people. There was a small, tiny remnant of Jews still living in Judea that were, they were kept there by the Babylonians for administrative purposes. But for the most part, the, the nation was entirely out of the land. We know that 70 years later, they were able to come back by the next empire that ruled this land. That was the Persians. They conquered the Babylonians, excuse me, and they allowed the Jews and other peoples as well, who were exiled by the Babylonians to return to their ancestral lands. The, the Jews were invited back by, by Cyrus, the Persian ruler, but only 5 to 10% of them actually came back. Most of them stayed in Babylonia and would stay there for the next couple of thousand years until modern day times. Um, still, the land was under Persian rule. There was no Jewish independent state yet then. After the Persians, we had the Greeks. The Greeks took over the land uh, under the the authority and leadership of Alexander the Great, who died shortly after the land of Israel was taken over by his empire. And uh, the Greeks ruled the land for, for quite a while until we know the Hasmonean revolt, the Maccabees, the story of Hanukkah. The Jews rose up and they, they defeated the Greeks and they kicked them out of this land after a very, very long war. And the Jews had uh, a bit of independence, almost a century, not quite a century, but almost a century of Jewish independent rule. Um, they lost that 
once the Romans took over in the first century BCE. And that would be the last time that the Jews would have independent rule in their own ancestral homeland until modern day times, 1948. The Romans ruled for quite a long time. And it was under the Roman rule, of course, that the second temple in Jerusalem uh, was destroyed and Jews went further into exile, um, spreading themselves all throughout Europe, North Africa and other places as well. There always remained a remnant of Jews after the, the, the destruction of the second temple in the land of Israel, in Judea, in Samaria, and other areas of the land of Israel. But eventually that number of Jews in the land became the minority. And Jews, the majority of the Jews, were spreading out uh, deeper and deeper, further and further around different parts of the world. Uh, after the Romans, eventually we'll have uh, Islamic rule. And then it was kind of like switching back and forth between Islamic rule and Christian rule. We had the Crusaders there. Uh, for a couple hundred years until they were defeated by the Muslims and the Muslims will continue to rule for a few hundred years. Eventually the Ottoman Empire will rule from the 1500s all the way through the, to the 1900s uh, until the, the uh, First World War in which the Ottomans were defeated. They lost all of their land in the Middle East. That was turned into mandates under the um, uh, overseeing of the League of Nations, which was created. Uh, after the First World War to try to prevent another world war. That didn't succeed, obviously. Um, but they, they, the League of Nations created the mandate system with these lands that uh, the Ottoman Empire lost. They gave it to uh, uh, the British and the French to manage these lands to help them uh, become independent countries. That was a whole definition of the mandate system. So in the land of Israel, you had the British, right? You had the mandate that was created by the League of Nations given to the British, uh, often called the British Mandate, uh, that lasted from around 1920 to uh, 1947, 48. And um, of course, we know at the end of the, of the British mandate was the UN partition plan voted on in November 1947, which passed. Uh, the Jews celebrated uh, the passing. The Arabs prepared for war, which began the very next day. And that began the War of Independence. The first six months of the War of Independence was actually still under British rule. They were still here physically. They had about 100,000 soldiers here, uh, but they were slowly preparing to leave. And they eventually left fully in May 1948. There was a very small window of time in which the Jews could declare their independent Jewish state uh, before the British left, like literally in the last ticking hours in the last day. Uh, the British were set to leave on, on May 14th, 1948, at midnight, and uh, the Jews declared their state at 4 p.m. that afternoon, literally with eight hours to go. Uh, the Jewish state was declared, the British left, the war continued all the way into 1949. Thankfully, of course, uh, the, the Jewish state, the newly born Jewish state, was successful in this war, and here we are back in our land, back with independence for the first time in over 2,000 years. So when we look at our enemies today, I mean, look at the different countries and terrorist organizations that are trying to take this land out of our hands. It's nothing new. We've dealt with this before. We've dealt with many empires trying to override us, attack us, replace us, exile us. Um, and uh, that has created a lot of strength and versatility and um, uh, deep passion to stay connected to our land. And thank God we're back in our land with an army for the first time in over 2,000 years and with the ability to defend ourselves and fight against those countries, those leaders, and those terrorist organizations who are trying to kick us out of this land and trying to replace us. We hope and we pray, of course, as we know all of you do as well, that this time the state of Israel, the Jews back in the land of Israel, will last forever. All the best and be well.